Hey guys, welcome to day two of Vlogmas. Today I'm going to go over two items I would buy if I was just starting out my business again. And they're both under a thousand dollars. So if you're looking to start your own business, maybe into sewing or even doing like t-shirts or something like that, um, I'm going to give you a couple tips on what those items are. And also it's kind of bright out today. <laughs> Isn't it nice? No snow. We haven't gotten any snow yet. Hardly. We got like maybe some flurries the other day, but that's about it. So it's wicked bright out today and I um, have my upper windows filtered. It's actually just stabilizer. <laughs> so I try to filter as much light as I could because lighting is horrible on camera. But anyway, so let's get started today and let's get into those items. So the first item is, drum roll please. This might be obvious, but it's the industrial sewing machine. <laughs> So if I were to start over again, I would get myself an industrial sewing machine. Now, um, this is the Juki DDL 8700. So why do I recommend getting an industrial sewing machine? One, because it, it will last you a lifetime. It won't break. Um, so it also is a high shank um, sewing machine. So you can do items that are a good thickness this one is about, I think, an inch and a half. Mm. Also, this can handle lightweight and medium weight. And I've actually done heavy weight with this one. Um, I've done like really, I've gone through several layers of batting. The linen fabric that I use, that heavyweight linen fabric, which is right there on the bottom. Um, I've gotten through layers of that with the batting and with the utility fabric. Um, this one cost $795. Now that is unassembled. You can actually buy these assembled for like $1,200. It's like $1,195. And I got mine from Goldblatt, um, what was it called? Goldblatt Sewing Machines out of Chicago. Uh, this is their card. Um, and they were very helpful. Like if you are attempting to put them together, um, they do offer videos on how to do that. So I did put this whole assembly together myself. I actually put the stand together. Um, I did attach, this is a um, servo mo motor and it makes it so that the sewing machine is super quiet. Um, and it was easy for me to do. I, I'm slightly, you know, I, I can put stuff together pretty, pretty good. Um, and it wasn't that hard for me. It took me about three days, but it wasn't like putting it together constantly for three days is like a couple hours each day. So it was, was it labor intensive? Eh, yeah, sort of. Um, you know, you got some big bolts here. So if you don't have the tools, then it's something that you might want to have assembled for you. Yeah, so if you're looking for an alternative and you can't afford the $7.95 price or even the $1,200 price, then I have a suggestion, a tip. So an alternative to industrial sewing machines, if it's not quite in your budget quite yet, go on eBay and look for like a 1970s vintage uh, Sears Kenmore. Um, those were built very much the same as an industrial sewing machine. They're very powerful. They were a home machine that was built back in the 1970s and they were built so much better back then. The outside is metal. The inside is metal with the gears. Um, you can still buy parts for it. So it's kind of neat. I still have mine from 1978. Um, it was my first sewing machine and it was built in 1978. So it's about 54 years old. It still works today um, and it can do more than one type of stitch. So this can do a straight stitch, but the Sears Kenmore can do many more stitches like zigzag and a bunch of other ones. So you're not limited to one stitch as well. So look on eBay. They're, they're kind of like in high demand right now. So I'm not sure how much they are at this point in time. Um, and just keep looking for them and look for one that's working because you don't want something that's been in a garage that's been rusting um, because you don't want those gears to be rusted unless you know how to fix one. I, I know how to fix mine because I had it for so long, but it's my go-to machine. If this one ever like went down for a few days because of the servo motor or something else. Um, so that's what I would use. So guys, what's the second item I would buy if I was just starting out again? Well, this is probably not a surprise either, <laughs> but it's a heat press. Now you see two models here. I'm gonna go over both of them, the pros and cons. So you see two clamshell heat presses right here. Um, one is 
uh, what we consider disposable. Um, when I say disposable, it's something that will last only about five years or so. And then this one was built in the US through Geonite, the company in Massachusetts, and they um, warranty all their parts um, and their heating elements. So this is something that would last a lifetime, and this would last anywhere from two to five years. And these are the ones that are cheaper, much cheaper. <laughs> you can find them on pretty much any um, sublimation website or even on eBay. Um, I do recommend you buy from a company that has a warranty because I believe a lot of companies will warranty these for about a year. Um, this is warranty for life, most of the parts, like the heating element. Um, the only thing that isn't is the electronics. Those are this box right here. That's um, only warranty for about three years through Geonite. But this is meant to last for your lifetime, and this is only meant to last for a short time. Um, most of these are made overseas, uh, usually in China. Um, <clears throat> and these, this particular one is made in um, the United States, in Massachusetts. So these are both clamshells. As you can see, I don't have any swingaways. Both of them are 16 by 20 inches. You'll see that the platens are the same size. Um, this one I don't use anymore. It's basically a paperweight. <laughs> it's just down in my basement. I had to bring it up here just to show you. Um, it doesn't work anymore. It got me about five years of pressing time. And you can see it's pretty worn and it's pretty old. So let's talk heating elements. Now this is important. I actually um, made diagrams and I'll get closer to the diagrams of what the heating elements look like under these platens. Now that's important because it also determines, like the type of heating element determines how even your um, heating, uh, your heat is for your substrate. And a lot of times you'll notice on the disposable ones, um, there's very little heating element. It's basically shaped like a Z and you'll find these in probably 90% of your um, disposable <laughs> heat presses. Now, this is a very, um, this is a heating element that if you lose like a little bit, like some of these will like fuse out, they'll just die out. So you're gonna have like spots on your, on your substrate eventually when it starts to die versus on this one, the heating element, excuse my diagram, but anyway, it's, it's basically a bunch of coils that go all the way to the middle on both sides. So this will give you a much more even heating. Once a little bit of this starts to go, you're gonna get like white spots or faded spots on your shirt or whatever you're pressing. So the heating elements are um, very important. Now let's talk about design. Um, you'll notice that the disposable heat press, I used to always burn my knuckles on this. <laughs> the reason why is because you have very low um, clearance between the back of the heat press, being that it's a clamshell, and the front. So to compensate, you'll see a lot of heat presses that have pull-out bottom platens so that you're not burning your, your knuckles on this. But a lot of the cheaper heat presses will have very little clearance. So if you're trying to do a shirt, a lot of people do the, the collar out here rather than put it in here. Um, I actually don't like that because I don't like to work upside down. <laughs> like when they put the shirt down, they put the collar here and they had to put the design upside down. So it's, for me, I don't like that. Um, with this one, you'll notice that the clearance is around eight inches. And I, if, I have yet to actually burn my fingers <laughs> on this at all. It gives you plenty of space. So if you're doing a shirt, you can actually put the collar up here and not burn your fingers. And the design won't be upside down if you're doing a shirt and you wanna put the collar up here, which is what I prefer because it, it just, it helps me to align it better than having it upside down. So these are obviously both clamshells. So they're clamshell because they close like a clam. <laughs> so you'll see on the market as well as the swingaways. Now the swingaways is when the top platen uh, swings away um, from the bottom platen. Now with a swing away, you're gonna need a lot more room for it. Like this, these clamshells are great for compact spaces. And you, in my opinion, you don't really need a swing away because a swing away is really good for thick items. Like these will work with thick items just fine, but um, 
if you're talking like two inches or so of, you know, that you're sublimating on, uh, you know, with your heat press, then that's something that's good for a swing away. You don't necessarily need a swing away. A swing away is good, but it's, you're, you're gonna get the same results with a regular clamshell. So the models, um, what these are, this is just a generic 16 by 20 um, that you can find on a lot of heat press sites. And they're, you know, different variations, different colors and all that. Um, this one is from Geonite, like I said before, and it's the model DK20. So just to let you know, in case you're interested, I'll also put the links down below in the description. And also on these generic ones, you're gonna see a lot of companies put their um, branding on it. Um, they're just a little bit different maybe in, in um, the design a little bit, but they're basically made in overseas versus this one that's made in the US. And uh, Geonite is actually pretty cool. Uh, the company, um, I think Aaron Knight is actually the CEO now. His father is the one that started the company, George Knight. And um, so he's, he's a really cool guy. He actually offers, if you want to tour the plant and see how they make them, because uh, they assemble them and they make them in Massachusetts. So um, it's a pretty neat little uh, factory. So if you ever want to even go see how they're made, um, you can contact them as well on that. But I really like this heat press. I like stuff that lasts. You're gonna be spending around $1,200 for this. $1,195, I think is what I paid for it. So obviously it's gonna be more expensive, just like the Juki. Um, but like I said, these things are made for life. So if you know you're gonna start your business and you know you're gonna be in your business for a very long time, that might be an investment for you uh, for doing like t-shirts or anything else you want to do. So let's talk features of each one of these heat presses. Now with a disposable heat press, you're not gonna get too many features. <laughs> Your bottom platen is fixed. You can't change it out uh, for like a smaller one, um, like this one, like you can with a DK Knight. Now this is a tag press. Um, put like uh, heat press your tags onto your shirt backs. Um, the, so they come in, uh, this is like a three by three. They come in like smaller, like 10 by 13s. This is a 16 by 20, but you change them out by pulling this pin over here. I have it on the side, but you pull out that pin and all you do is lift it up and you can put in a whole entire new platen that fits your project. So if you're doing like infant onesies or even child t-shirts, children's, I'm sorry, children's t-shirts, you can change that into a smaller platen and they have different sizes on the Geonite website. Also with the Geonite, you can thread your shirt over the bottom platen so that you can get um, a better um, alignment with whatever you're pressing. Right now, this is an embroidered, <laughs> embroidered cow, but um, that's not something you would do under a heat press. But I just want to give you an idea of what else you can do. Um, you can't do that with this one. You can't really fit a t-shirt over. Um, that This part right here actually prevents it from um, going like this. If you notice on this particular one, the Geonite, there's a lot of space under there. So you can just put the back of the shirt underneath so that the top fits pretty snugly on here and you can easily align your shirt. So that's just another feature. Well, that's day two. I hope you guys found at least the information I gave you today a little helpful. Um, if you're thinking about buying a new heat press or even just starting to look into heat presses right now, or um, even like an industrial sewing machine, wondering if you need one. Um, so hopefully that was just a little bit helpful. <laughs> so I'll see you guys tomorrow for day three.